Next up, Avital Oliver is going to tell us something surprising. Oh, is that true? Right <laughs> side. No. It's not so surprising, but. Uh... Yes, it's a surprise. It's a surprise because we didn't know about it. Uh, hey, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Avital. I work here. Uh, I'm happy that Jeff gave his 1.0 talk because he kind of spoke about the Meteor UI uh, work that we're doing and some of the design considerations. And um, Spark, the current system, the current system Spark that um, runs the Meteor uh, reactive templating system uh, isn't actually that good uh, for some of the reasons that Jeff spoke about. It's kind of confusing. It's slow. There's all these things you need to think about. And more specifically, it doesn't work uh, almost at all with uh, modifi direct modifications to the DOM. And specifically, if you want to use jQuery plugins, then almost always you're going to hit at least some trouble, or maybe sometimes it just won't work at all. And turns out there's a lot of really good jQuery plugins out there that people want to use. So um, as Jeff pointed out, one of the main design considerations behind the new rendering engine, which is the first chunk of work towards Meteor UI, is uh, interoperability with jQuery plugins. And David Greenspan and I, who have been working on this, have tried a few examples of writing apps with jQuery. And so far, uh, success has been really good. And we think that we can flesh out the bugs and basically make it uh, possible to integrate any jQuery plugin you want with Meteor Reactive templates in a way that's seamless. This week here at Meteor, we've been doing bug week, where we go back and look at a bunch of old GitHub issues that we never had really time to stop and think about because we're so focused on 1.0. And what I've been doing is try to look at the ones specifically related to Spark and also more specifically around integration with jQuery and try to see if they still happen on our experimental branch that uh, is almost feature complete. And uh, so far, it's been really good. Uh, almost all the cases that we've been able to reproduce the failure on Spark have not had the failure happen on our branch. And the few bugs that still happen, we're sure we can flesh out. So I just wanted to show one of the most extreme examples of something that did not work before and does work now. So here's a very, very simple app. Um, let me make it larger. Here's the HTML. Sorry, is that too big? OK. HTML, there's almost nothing here. There's a span, insert me, and there's a template hello with a div container. Then the JavaScript says, when you move over, um, when the mouse enters the um, document, sorry, the container div, then all you do is append insert me into container, which actually means move the DOM element insert me into div container. And what used to happen in Spark is this caused an infinite loop and made your browser tab hang completely. And now, with our new engine, it simply does the right thing. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, that's just one example of many where basically things just work the way you expect. So I'm really excited to be working on this. Really soon we'll have a preview release out there for you to try to run your apps against that maintains more or less feature parity with the current Spark with some slight um, changes that we will document explicitly. And we think you guys are going to have a great experience using it. It'll be faster, easier to use, less buggy, and um, really exciting. So looking forward to shipping that. Thank you. Questions? Yes? Do uh, Mostly not. There's specific. <laughs> the question was, do you have to rewrite the entire app? And the answer is, we've actually gone into um, some, some large amount of work to try to make that not be true. There's a few fundamental changes that you're going to have to think about. For example, it is no longer the case that calling a template as a function returns an HTML string with a rendered HTML of the template. So stuff around using um, helpers to render safe string the HTML to have dynamic templates won't work. Instead, there will be a different pattern to use to have dynamically rendered templates. So we'll document all these things explicitly, and uh, we think it's going to be fairly simple to port your app. Any other questions? Right. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>